Hello everyone. Thanks for checking out my channel, Fix, Create, Explore. I will be posting videos regularly about things that I fix or create along with places I explore. Check the channel description for more information and please subscribe. Today I will be installing the iArmor Edge side steps on a 2013 GMC Sierra 2500 HD. This is a diesel truck with a def tank that sits really close to the mounting area of the passenger side steps. This is my first video, so I am looking forward to all your feedback in the comments. <laughs> so I should have let you see it before I unpacked, but um, you can still see one of the side steps there off to the side. All the parts were in the three boxes in the middle. I've kind of got them all, including the steps, all spread out here. And I started to put the one step on already. The hardest part so far has just been uh, getting these little T-bolts into the track and line it up with the holes in the step. But that was nothing. It's a little frustrating at some times, but you got to get them all lined up properly so the step will slide down the bolts themselves. I'm fixing to tighten them all up here and then I'll work my way down to the other one. Uh, the directions say to put all the steps on, all four steps on the two different rails first and then I'll start getting up underneath the truck. And if you don't know what a T-bolt is, that's this little thing above or looks like a T or a, even an old railroad spike almost. but it goes down into this track here and then uh, since you're going to be tightening the nuts that way I would suggest you twist it the way so it naturally when you're tightening the nut it keeps this T in that slot as you tighten it down okay so the first two steps are on and the only thing I would point out is one, like I mentioned before on the T bolts, they're dummy proof. So you don't have to worry about turning them the, to the right because it won't let you turn them to the left. Um, you want to, this little uh, hex nut bolt on both sides of the, the top of the step, you want to line those up first. Um, once well, first put the T-bolts in, all these T-bolts. Set the step down on them to where they're just on them without any washers or nuts on them. And then put these two hex bolts in to make sure they're lined up and, and you can even tighten them down because that'll actually help you line up these back here. And if there is any play, like when I first put these on back here, I went back and found that this one wouldn't line up at all, so I had to loosen all these back up. All right, I'm back. I had a little technical difficulties. I guess you can't have several apps running in your phone while you're recording because it heats up. So fresh out of the freezer, here we go. Um, all I had to use to put together the steps onto the rails was uh, is it a 10 millimeter? I use this to uh, tighten them down and then cinched it up with a 10 millimeter wrench there. Um, this is a four meter hex for the end bolts that I talked to you about. All right, so the next step involves taking these two pieces here, these two pieces here, both clearly marked, and making them look like the picture, which uh, this is the driver front mount, driver front support bracket, and bolt head through on this side, nut washers on both sides and I'm keeping it loose 
until uh, I get it up underneath the truck. And same with the passenger side. Got the passenger front mount clearly marked. Passenger front support put together with uh, the uh, M8 flat washer, M8 nylon nut, and an M8 bolt. Head on this side, nut and washer. Washer on both sides, actually. All right, now we're off to the truck. All right, so now we are heading under the vehicle. And it says to use the uh, first, second, and fifth mounting holes, which on the pinch weld. So here's the first one, the second one right here, and the fifth one all the way down there where the tip of my finger is at. And with each of those, like on the second one here, you're gonna see this little mounting hole right there. And likewise, up here on the first one. So the uh, M8 bolt that they give to go through this, uh, it could tell there's a lot of build up here. This truck's been around for a few years, so I uh, found a like a gun uh, cleaning. I think I used it for like a 22. I'm gonna run this in there and just kind of turn it around, get any dust, rocks, anything else that's been collected up in there, just to make the threads a little smoother with this bore brush. you clean the bore brush before you stick it down the bore of your gun again. So there's a little light on the subject. Let's see if that bolt will go in there a little better. Yeah, it's a little smoother now. All right, so now that we have the holes all figured out, cleaned up, I've got the uh, parts I'm gonna need for the front here. The front driver's side mount is gonna be this one. I'll grab the other ones later, but these are some of the, I'm gonna need at least two of these and one of these to attach it. And I also will need a, uh, 13 millimeter socket should do the trick all right so as I mentioned we're going to use the first second and fifth hole here on the pinch weld we utilize this uh, little fastener here take it and slide it across that all right so it's now in place where you have a mount there and as I mentioned up here the mount that we cleaned out earlier that's the second one here's the first one here ready to go we're gonna take this driver front mount with your eight millimeter bolt lock washer with a flat washer on top of it and put it into this fastener here Just 
finger tight. Take this one, same thing, eight millimeter bolt, flat washer with a lock washer in between the bolt head and the flat washer, and into the threaded uh, part on the body here that we cleaned out earlier. And that's, I'll take the socket wrench. I'm not going to tighten these all the way down yet until I make sure everything lines up good with the steps. But I do want to get it enough on here where I know it's not going to fall for right now. And that seems to be that. That's stable. All right, so this is the side you couldn't see when I was putting that in. As you can see, you've got the bolt, lock washer, flat washer, up into this fastener that I popped over the existing hole in the pinch weld. And then this bolt here I put into an existing threaded hole that is on the fuselage of the truck already stock and it's just loosely mounted but uh, we're going to move on to uh, the second spot here and do the same thing all right continuing the saga we're going to do the this is driver's side center mount driver's side rear mount they're interchangeable so you can use either one i've got uh, the bolt set up with lock washer flat washer again and I still haven't put in a rear fastener on the number five hole back there so I've got that for that so we'll do the number two and the number five hole all right so this last one here well one this little tab was a little bent so I had to bend it back down but this cap was over this big port here and to take the cap off it just pops right out and then slide the fastener into the big hole and there was another little hole next to the big hole that this bolt will go through and join into the fastener so I kind of preset it up here I can slide this mount over the top of it hopefully Alright, it's a magic time to put the step rail on to the mounts. These are the tools and hardware I'm going to need. And uh, we'll head on out there. Alright, so here we are with the uh, step and the mounts. Install it on here. Set it in place quickly here to see how everything lines up. Alright, so this definitely goes down a little further for the step there. Alright. So. going to do uh, the T uh, bolts and with each T bolt you're going to have a flat washer and a lock washer. So, of course the T bolts are going to be up in these grooves. Put them in the groove and twist to the right. Put it in the groove, twist to the right, that locks it in. And then we'll put it down into these holes here. 
mount. And then I'll have a lock washer on each one. Or not a lock washer, a flat washer, I'm sorry. And a locking nut. washer there and a locking nut sometimes they are difficult <laughs> perseverance always gets the job done And as I've done in all the other ones, I'm just doing them finger, finger loose just to hold them in place. Don't tighten anything down until you get everything hooked up. So I'm going to take uh, two more sets here, two T-bolts, uh, two wash flat washers, and two locking nuts, and work on the middle. All right, so on this front mount, it's a little different. We've got to slide this uh, square head bolt in this groove here, slide it all the way down to this driver front support, which I attached to the mount earlier in the video, and then get it to where it lines up there, put a flat head or a flat washer on it, and a locking nut same locking nuts that we we're using on the other end and i'm just going to get it started there and finger down and then for this bottom part here we've got another channel type groove on the step here that we slide this uh square head bolt into it gotta lift up the step a little bit till we can get it down where it slides into this hole. And took a little bit but it's on perseverance perseverance and then we put the washer over that the flat washer with another nylon lock nut I think this nut knows that I'm sitting out in the 85 degree sun blaring down on me. All right, finger tight. All right, now that everything's attached, just finger tight, I'm gonna get up in here and start tightening everything down. I'm gonna start with uh, all the mounts up against the fuselage. Tighten those brackets first so I can have them steady and then I'll work on all the, the mounts where the brackets mount to the, the sideboard. Alright, so the driver side is done on this 2013 GMC Sierra 2500 HD diesel. I think they look pretty sharp. Now we're going to move over to the uh, side with the def tank on it. I got a good warm up with this side and uh, we'll head over to the other side and get started on it. Alright, so I always like to look things over before I start installing or taking stuff apart. And I noticed a problem. As you can see, I have the passenger center mount, passenger rear mounts here, and a passenger front mount. 
on the side of the death tank is. So, looking up underneath here, I'll definitely, as the directions say, I'll definitely need to remove the death tank cover and then drop the tank down in to get the mount up in there. And, uh, but when it comes to this second hole here, the mount that they provided, which I'm gonna show here, this passenger center rear mount, because it's offset like this, as you can see, it's up against a tank and I'd have to crank it that way to even line up with the hole. So I looked at the mounts on the other side for the center mount on the other, the driver's side center mount, and it's offset the other way. So this flange here and that flange are opposite, which means that it should work a lot better here than this one that's labeled for passenger center, or passenger rear. Uh, it won't work, period, with this tank in the way. So I'm going to remove the uh, center one from the driver's side and swap it out with this one and hope for the best. We'll find out together. Before all that swapping, I'm going to go ahead and work on this def tank just so I can make sure that front mount is going to go in there as well. So it says to remove the def tank cover first. Uh, it's got these three bolts holding the cover itself onto the frame. I've almost got them off here. I'm gonna finish, uh, finish up taking those three off and then I'll get back to you. All right, so the three bolts are out on the cover. And as you can see right there, there's like a tab there and there's another one similar to it up in there. It's hard to see. So I'm going to work on uh, getting this tab, the cover up and over this tab, and, and get back to you after that. All right, so I got the passenger front mount on, and surprisingly, I did it without removing the def tank. I thank these long, bony fingers for that, but uh, and a little skill working in tight places on a jet engine in the Navy. So I put one arm up into here and had my hand, well, actually just my fingers up in here and was able to actually get the bolt started threaded. And once I got the bolt threaded into that uh, existing, the threads that are in the fuselage up there. So once it was Th actually threads were going then I just used this hand to uh, like feel the top of the head of the bolt and then on I'd reach up the wrench up there turn just a tiny bit because that's all I had room for and then you'd have to flip the wrench over and reset it and I'd feel with my fingers and it was all tiny bit and then reset the wrench tiny bit again and that took me roughly uh, probably close to 30 minutes that slow turning motion and just having my fingers stuck in that tight spot there was kind of cramping up at some point but uh, I got it so it turns out my calculations are correct. I took the mount from the driver's side that was labeled driver's side, middle, and I'm moving it over to the passenger side. So as you can see, the offset from where the mount is and this uh, now will just fit up against the tank instead of the other one that was labeled for this side. The offset was the opposite, so the mount was over on this side, and likewise with the top one, which put this whole metal bar inside where the tank is, which would not work, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this up now and move on to the third and final mount. All right, so 
all the mounts are on and they're just tightened loosely the biggest problem I had was with this one well not counting that front one up there using the tips of my fingers but this one I needed to use a, uh, a universal to uh, tighten down the, the bolt uh, let's see if we get some light the bolt up in there because it's just a tight spot uh, the universal was able to get down on it and it's everything is still loose so I can put the a step on and I'll be right back after I loosely put the step on and we'll do the final tightening all right guys that is it everything's tightened down looks pretty sharp The only tools I used were as, um, a four metric uh, Allen straight slot, uh, 13 millimeter socket, 3 8 universal drive for the, the middle mount up there by the tank, and then a uh, 13 millimeter wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, and a 10 millimeter uh, drive for all the bolts out on the actual step itself. And a flashlight here and there up around the tank, just so I could see what I was doing. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the hardest out of all the things mechanically I've done in my life, uh, that was probably a three. Uh, it took a little while up there near the death tank uh, long fingers prevailed. If, uh, if I had to drop the death tank uh, a little bit to get up in there, that probably would have took it up to a four or five for me. It just looked like a pain in the butt to do so. But uh, hey, it all came out. Everything looks great and uh, ready to move on to the next task. If you haven't already, uh, please. Uh, Give me a thumbs up on this if you if it was worth your while and uh, and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll have other things that I find around the house and just in life that I try to fix and help you out with making it a little easier. Take care, all. Bye. It's me again. So I was finishing up the edits and thought, you know what? I should do a review on these side steps. Uh, my wife and I just got back from a month-long vacay up along the northwestern states in our travel trailer, and uh, we use the steps frequently to get in and out of the vehicle. I used them to stand on to attach some paddle boards onto the roof rack of the truck we have, and they never gave way. I never felt like they were going to be falling out from underneath me real strong, durable side steps. I definitely buy them again. Later. <laughs>